Hello, my name is Diane, and today I want to talk about some of the best new to me authors that I've read from this year. These are all authors that I've read one of their works for the first time this year, but they're also all authors that have other works out already. So not only do I want to read more from these authors, I easily could because what I read from them is not the only thing that they have published. The first author is Catherine Arden. I read the Winter Night Trilogy at the beginning of this year and I really loved it. I was very impressed by the writing and the atmosphere that she managed to create. It felt like a very winter fairy tale, which I was reading it in the winter, so it was kind of fitting for this season, the atmosphere that I was looking for in a book. She really captured the magic of the story and the growing up of the main character. Currently, most of her other works I think are middle grade. I know she has a middle grade series that's already out, but she also has a historical fiction that's coming out early next year that I'm looking forward to. It sounds very interesting. So I'm not sure if I'll read the middle grade that she already has, but she does have a new release coming out in the next few months that I'm excited to get to. The next author is R.J. Barker. I read Gods of the Weirdwood, which is the first book in his latest series, but he also has two other trilogies out already. One of them is about ships. I don't know too many details about either one of these. One of them I know takes place on ships and at sea and the other one is Following Assassins, and both of those are things that really interest me, and I really liked the setting he created. Again, this was an author that had really great atmosphere, and just the feeling of his book and the setting, and it was a very magical feeling story. Beyond just being engaged with the characters, I was engaged with the whole story and where it was taking place. So I would like to read his other series at some point. They're both things that I'm interested in and I already know I like his writing. Next up I have Kelly Barnhill. This year I read The Crane Husband, which I think is her newest release, and it follows this girl who lives on a farm with her family and things are very strange there. She has a younger brother and lives with her mother and her mother is an artist. She's not the most reliable as a parental figure and the main character is sort of picking up the slack, but this mother brings home a large crane one day and says he's basically going to be their new father. And things just start to get progressively worse within the house. It's just a very bizarre story, but it was so interesting and it's one that really stuck with me, the way that it was writing, the themes that it tackles. I know that Kelly Barnhill has a number of other books out, some of them I've had my eye on, like When Women Were Dragons but she also has a number of middle grade and some young adult books out as well that all sound like really unique, interesting stories, so I'm excited to get into some of those eventually and see what other bizarre, interesting stories she's come up with. I also read Gareth Hanrahan this year, with The Sword Defiant being his newest release and the start of his latest series. I really liked the story. This was one of my favorite reads of the year, but it is just a big fantasy adventure following a main character with lots of morally gray characters around them. The plot is very interesting. The world is very rich. Lots of things that I look for in my fantasy. And I also just really liked the way the story was paced out. Well, I'm definitely going to be continuing with that series, he does have one other trilogy out already. And I haven't heard too much about it, I don't know too many details about what it's actually about, but I have heard good things about it, so I would like to at some point read that. Next up is Heather Fawcett. She made her adult debut at the beginning of the year with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I went into this expecting an okay story, but not really expecting to like it as much as I did. I was very pleasantly surprised. Fae stories just usually aren't for me. They don't really resonate with me that well, but this one was just a lot of fun. I really liked the main character. I thought the story was interesting, and it was just a fun, magical story. Heather Fawcett does have a number of young adult and middle grade books out already, and they all sound like very different magical adventures, so I would like to read at least some of those. I don't know how many of them I'd be interested in just because of the age ranges, but I'm definitely going to be continuing her newest series with Emily Wilde and maybe reading some of her younger works eventually. One author that I had also had my eye on some of his books before this, but just never got around to reading them, is M.R. Carey. This year I read Infinity Gate, which is a sci-fi story about parallel worlds and how they 
can come together with three main characters whose lives all intertwine as they discover these other Earths. I have seen M.R. Carey's books elsewhere before, other sci-fi stories, and wanted to read them but just never made the time for them, and now I definitely want to, knowing that I like his writing and I really liked this story. I thought it was very engaging. So I definitely want to finally read those other books that I've had my eye on. Brie Paulson is both a writer and an artist. She mostly does graphic novels. She has a webcomic called Patrick the Vampire, but she also wrote the Garlic series with Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch. I really enjoyed all of these. I think they're really cute. They're really fun. They're really interesting stories. Her take on vampires is so funny because they're not... They kind of are the stereotypical bloodthirsty vampires, but they're trying to be better, and I just think that's a really interesting approach to vampires. I like her art style. I think Garlic particularly is adorable, and she does have two more books coming out down the line. One of them comes out next year. I'm not sure when the other one's supposed to come out, but there are at least two new things expected from her in the coming year or so, so I'm definitely going to have my eye out for those when they come out. I also read from David Dalglish this year. I read one of his sequels without having read the first book in the series, and I still very much enjoyed it, even without all the backstory of the first book that I should have had going into it. It was still very easy to follow, very easy to connect with the characters and fall into the story. The world was very interesting, so it definitely made me want to read some of his other works, maybe start from the beginning with those ones. I am going to read the final book in the trilogy that I started in the middle of, but he does have five other series out, so there's plenty to choose from. I'm not sure the specifics of any of his other series, but I would like to see some of his other writings, some of the other worlds he's created. Sarah Pinsker was a little bit of an unusual read for me. She writes a mixture of novels and short stories, different lengths of work, and I don't normally read short stories. I don't know why, but they just don't appeal to me as much as a full-length novel does. But I read one of her short stories this year, and the format was so interesting, and the story was so interesting, that it made me want to read some of her other works, some of her longer works, just because that's what I'm most interested in reading. But she wrote a short story that is set up like a message forum, like a comment section on a music lyric website and you are going through the lyrics of this old folk tale while also seeing users interact with one another and discuss what they think it's actually about. And I thought it was such a unique way to tell a story and create characters where you don't really know anything about them other than their username and what they're posting on this particular page. And I thought that was really creative and would like to see what else she's come up with because she has a lot of other things out and she's very well recognized. And I'd like to see what other stories she's created because she has so many other things out already. And the last author I want to mention is Moses Osiotomi. He debuted earlier this year with a young adult novel and then shortly after released his adult novella, which is the beginning of a series. That's the one that I read, the novella called The Lies of the Ajungo, with the sequel, The Truth of the Aleki, coming out next year. I'm very much looking forward to that. And even though I don't normally read young adult and I'm probably not going to read his other book but I was very tempted to because when I finished The Lies of the Ajungo I just wanted to see what he could do with a longer format story and that was the only other one that he had out because my only complaint about that book really was that I wanted more of it and that's not really a complaint. So I'm definitely excited to read his sequel and also see what else he comes up with in the future. And if I'm really getting impatient, I might just read a young adult book because I want to see what else he can do. So those are 10 authors that were new to me that I read from this year that I'm looking forward to reading more from. Let me know if you read any new authors this year that you absolutely loved. That's all for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.